Hey guys, this is going to be a more in-depth look at data and tree structures. Um, don't worry about replicating this definition, this video is all just about proof of concept, so just sit back and watch. I started by referencing a surface into Grasshopper and then using this surface division component. Now before I go on, I just want to explain something that I've probably explained before and probably will explain again, but it's really it really messes with people's minds when they start using Grasshopper for the first time. So I've given this surface 8 and 10 divisions in the U and V direction respectively. And so logically you might assume that, that would give you 80 points in total, when in fact what it actually gives you is 99 points. And you might be wondering why. In order to explain this, I'm just going to bring these divisions down to two divisions in the U and four divisions in the V. So when I say, or when I've given it two divisions, what this means is one division and two divisions. So in order to create one and two divisions, we need one, two, three points. So your count is always going to result but your number of points is always going to be your count plus one. Similarly, in the V direction, we have one, two, three, four counts, and we have one, two, three, four, five points. So just always remember, if you're dividing a curve or a surface, uh, your count plus one. All right, I'm just going to set these back to eight and ten. Okay, now we're going to look at the parameter view. And so you can see that I've got my nine branches set up with uh, 11 data items in each branch, as we might expect. And uh, I'm just going to visualize this using the point list display. So I turn this on, and you'll notice that we have a whole lot of numbers and different colors attached to those numbers. Basically, what Grasshopper does for this point list display is it it, uh, for every item index, it will drop down a number, and then for every new tree, it will drop it into a new color, which is a really, like, a really powerful way, a really simple and powerful way to understand what's going on here. So this is tree 000, this is tree 001, 002, 003, and so on and so forth. And then we have item index 1, 2, 3, 4, Five and so on and so forth. Um, now I'm just going to use a list item over here and we're going to plug our list of points in and we're also going to make a copy of this slider. Now I'm going to plug this in and at item index zero what are you going to th what do you think we might get uh, out of this out of this uh, list item. What it's going to do is it for every single branch in the tree, it's going to retrieve the first item in that list. So if there's nine branches, it's going to give us nine items. If we, which you can see now, it says selected the first row of items, which were at index zero. If we only wanted the very first item in the list, what we would need to do is uh, flatten this input. As soon as we flatten it, you'll see that we now have one list with 99 items, and it is giving us just the first point. Alright, uh, now I'm going to move on to understanding how the, uh, how the tree structure works. So I've just, uh, I'll turn my points back on. So what you might be able to see here, or what you should be able to see, I'll uh, lower these divisions. Is a tree structure followed by a number in brackets. So this tree will line up with all our data trees from the param viewer, and then this number inside the brackets is our item index. This is just a this is a really simple way. Well, this is how we should be understanding structure in Grasshopper. If I were to grab this panel out, you can see that every single item has a root 
a root tree index, which is 0, 0, 0, and then it will also have an item index. So this is 0, 0, 0, and then item 0. If we were to scroll down a little bit, we'll get to uh, where we have 0, 0, 6, item 0, which is somewhere over here. 0, 0, 6, item 0. All right. Uh, next, we're going to move on to a more complex data structure. Turn these off, and I'm going to turn these points on. Um, actually, I won't turn those ones on. I'll turn these on. So instead of what we had before, which was a two-dimensional data structure, we've now got a three-dimensional data structure. And the way that we can tell how many dimensions there are to a data structure is with a parameter viewer. If we I'll just take my divisions down here, we plug that in. Okay. So you should be able to see that we now have. Um, we now have four digits here. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just use the simplify button here. The simplify gets rid of any index numbers that are identical across the whole list. Um, so what we now have here is we have we have um, how can we say this? There's three dimensions to this data. You can see that we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then for each of these numbers, we iterate through 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And each of those branches has five items. And that's because we have an x direction, y direction, and z direction to the data structure. We can view that using the... Uh, using the same system that I created, or the tag system that I created. So we have, um, from our data structure, um, branch index 0, 0, and item number, or uh, item index number 0. If we were to uh, go somewhere else, um, we could look at 4R. So branch index 4, 1 will be right over here, so it will be the fifth branch in the y direction, or in the x direction, sorry, the, fifth, the second branch in the y direction, and it is this entire list of data, are these five points over here. So now, if we were to take a list item out of this list of points over here, what might we expect? Well, if we've got 25 branches of data, um, and we're picking a list item out of each, well, it would make sense that we'd have 25 items. And as you can see, that picks the first layer of 25 items, exactly as we might have guessed. And if I slide through this index, you'll see that it picks one layer of 25 points at a time. Okay, so now the next thing you might be asking me is, what, what is what's significant about data structure? And, okay, um, let's say... Okay, let's go back to the list of points that I created in the first example. Okay. Here, here's the list of points. Oh, where is this coming from? My list item. Okay. So I have this list of... I have this structure of points. If I were to create polyline 
through those, you'll see that it will only connect points which are on the same data tree. So this is a really good way to connect and uh, sort of or connect relevant or uh, relative items of data. Um, so we could, yeah, we can connect all these points together in a line. If we wanted to connect the points in the opposite direction, what we'd need to do is we'd somehow need to swap these, this row of data with this row of data. And luckily, Grasshopper gives us a real easy way to do that, and that is a flip matrix component. So as soon as we plug our points into the flip matrix, we plug them into our polyline, there we go. We now get our list of points connecting in the opposite direction. And now we could try and maybe loft these together. Oh, but it hasn't quite done it. And uh, why is that? That's because we get nine data trees out of this, which uh, with one item on each tree, which means that none of the items are uh, are going to loft together. Because in order for something to loft together, they need to be on the same list. So if we flatten this list, we're now going to get a loft across all of those points. All right. Uh, that's a uh, that's another look at data structures. Hope it was helpful.